Mark Savage here, welcome to my channel. Finally, 4T, the direct bike, which also known as Pulse um, Scout, I think they were, the Boetian 49 LG, wherever they were. Simple, get you their bikes. Young little lad bought this one and was thought it was new. You know, telltale signs, it's been over, are uh, everywhere. Telltale signs. And it just gets worse here. Panel off, glue all that, make sure it's, it's done properly. Take this up and out, under there's going to be a battery, gather it off and charge it. Seat bucket, three little screws, get that out. In here, plug, just there. Carburetor, I'm going to take that out, clean it. Plug, already done. Put some fresh fuel in it. Drain it wherever we can for the old stuff. And let's see what this little thing does. But I say I want to get all, all this lot off and bond it. Oh, I couldn't say it that way. Uh, also, oil change. Now, the oil is here, okay? And there'll be a little bolt under there, I don't know, 13 mil, wherever it is. And we're going to drain the oil out and put some fresh oil in. But first, I want to see, will it start? So I'm going to change the oil no matter what, so we get this old oil out of here. Ah, oh, just, you know, poor little lad. That's just terrible. Oh, look. You know that would have done that any second. So I'm going to... That's not great, is it? I'm going to bond all this so it's all properly done and nicely so it doesn't fall apart, whoever has it, after this. Did I mention this black box? Yes. I don't know what that's about, though. Not you can have two people. Well, in other countries you have two people. Only 1,900 miles, and I'm pretty sure that yes, it's in kilometres. That's not great. Oh, coming off, that can go on there nicely. We'll sort this bike out. Stay with me. Let's see what we're going to do. So when you're working on a bike, this is what I suggest you do. Don't try half measures by trying to squeeze your arms along and underneath get exactly to where you need to get to. Now these panels uh, are not supposed to come off like this. Um, they really are cheap plastic. I had my uh, CBR 600 and I bought some really expensive panels. Really good. These are cheap crap. Now they're £30 each. I've got to decide whether it's worth paying £60 to renew this side which will make it look really good. Um, and get obviously a new lever and anything else I may need to get to it for this bike if it runs or just repair the panels that are here um, because these bikes don't hold any money I can't see any sense in replacing them so I'm going to repair them see what they look like if they really do look like tack and then obviously I'll consider it but I've already done the spark plug I've already tested spark we've got a good blue spark, not a yellowy crappy spark which would indicate there's problems with spark plug or CDI unit or wiring or earthing we've got a good blue spark and as I pulled it slightly away it jumped so you know the closer the further away you get it will stop jumping remember if you're going to do that don't be holding it okay because you can get a shock from it, it bloody hurts so carburetor coming off, a few little bolts, comes up, take it out, clean it Sort it out, put it back in again, and then put some fresh fuel in this, and let's see where it starts. I've done many carburetor videos. I'm not going to keep showing you on the same ones. Watch my carb cleaning ones. Okay, 40 and 2 This is 40, remember? So I'm doing that, I'm doing that, taking it out, cleaning it all, putting it all back together again. You don't necessarily need to take it completely off of this either. You can do it, but you don't need to. You know, look how easy it is to get to everything with this engine now. We're also going to do an oil change. And that will be the sump screw. Okay, nice and easy just to undo that one and let the oil drain out, put some fresh, ordinary engine oil in here. You don't have to get motorbike oil, the clutch isn't in there, remember the clutch is here. So that's, we're going to change that as well. I'm only guessing, I don't think it's ever been done. And I bet you the spark plug's never been changed either. I mean, every bike should have a service. I think these should go in, um, big bikes, 600 miles, these maybe even earlier. You know, it's probably got the original oil, the original air filter, the original bits and bobs. You can't run them like that, you know, they will fail and um, they get a bad reputation for it. Anyway, I'm going to clean the carburetor, 
put the bits that I can do be a second. Remember what I say, battery on charge? That's a big old battery, you know. Anyway, so just undo both of these. So they're loose. We'll have a check of the air filter as well. Just give it a little yank here and there. Here we go, one side, other side. And there's your little carburetor. Nice and easy, undo that, undo that. Unclip this little clip here. I'm sure there'll be one there as well. That's your auto choke, okay? Nice and easy, take that out. And then you can have some fuel in here. I'll be honest with you, it smells stale, which is odd. Hmm, it does smell a bit stale. Anyway, there you go. Underneath the bowl off, clean it all out, go from there. Nice and easy. Fresh fuel. Yeah. It's just a drain plug. To drain any old fuel out, the bottom one is. From, there we go. Yeah. You might want to get yourself a little tray if you're doing this in a nice clean shed. Luckily my shed's not clean. There we go, look at that lovely fuel. That's a bit odd, you know. Why would that be uh, coming out now? I know I've moved it around. And that might even be blocked as it's not coming out on the floor. So, a little bit of investigation. But, um, I'll have a look and let you know. Now, while I'm here, I just want to say to you, get yourself either electrical screwdrivers or a really good set of screwdrivers because these bloody screws are really really hard to get out um, they're hard to crack as it were you know really really cheap and what you don't want is them going round and then you can't get the damn things out and then you've got a world of pain this fuel smells disgusting it really doesn't smell good um, I'm actually going to drain out the whole lot I don't know whether we've got water in it, but this smells like a bike that's been left for like six months in the sun. It's not good. I don't know how long. Anyway, two jets, take them out, blow them out, clean them. Obviously, the float system's fine. We'll blow that through like I show you in other videos. Put a pipe there, turn it back round. You blow through, and then when you stop blowing, it, when it, the float goes up. So basically like that. So you blow, it will blow through, and it will stop. That's how you know that's working. I'm going to spray all this up. That's all the vacuum on top. Don't touch that. It should be working fine, you know if it's not, because it just won't work, but we'll do this. Anyway, take them out, blow them up with carburetor cleaner. The fuel looks very, like, pissy, you know? Should be a much clearer colour than that, and there's bits in it. So, yeah, I think, I think if we've got really low on fuel, well, I don't know. That's what I'm guessing. I don't know what's in here, but we're going to give it a good clean-up as well. What's that? That's a bit poor, isn't it? Look, that's a little bit of sealant, you know? I mean, that could be floating around in there, get sucked up through the jets. We're going to clean all that and take it all out. Can you see a little bit there? I mean, you know, it just doesn't take much to block a jet. It really doesn't. So I'm going to clean all that out with carburetor spray. I just wanted to show you that. I know I said I wasn't going to, but I do like showing you bits and bobs. Right. So are you... Yes, glasses, okay. I couldn't see through this bloody thing here. Right, here's my top tip, okay? Really, really good carburetor top tip. Always have a little bit of electrical wire. That jet that goes in the carb was blocked. No matter how much carburetor spray I put through there, it would not go through. Now, what I've done many times before is you spray it, as in take the plastic off, and then wind two bits and one bit together and keep going back and forth and back and forth with this, okay? And eventually, you'll see now how much this went through, okay? That's how much it went through. So actually, I could see it. It took me ages. Keep going back and forth and back and forth. And now, I can actually see daylight through there with glasses on. But it wouldn't go through. So now I can carb clean that up, there it's going through, going through, going through, and it pops out the end. Alright, that is really, really good. It wasn't doing that before, which meant this was blocked. Which means, more than likely, this tiny little jet was causing the problems. Now it does have little holes down the sides, okay? Three little sets of holes down each side. 
Not you can see that in the camera. Um, but that was blowing out there. It wasn't blowing all the way through, so you weren't getting the proper amount of fuel through. And personally, I think it's quite dirty at the bottom of there. So I'm going to drain the fuel out, clean this up a bit more, pull it back together again, fresh fuel, it should start. So I've tried to explain this many times about this. This is the fuel one, okay, that goes on the top of the carburetor. And just to the bottom here, you're going to find the other pipe that goes into the manifold, okay? That is the one, that is the vacuum system, okay? So you've got your fuel line, and you've got your vacuum. Get a nice clean rag, put it there, put that there, and watch. Now, although it's coming out, it's not very good, so I'm guessing that something's blocked there, or it really is that bad on fuel, however, that is uh, it's clean, it's not bad, but this is simple how you just suck this through. Now, this is what I say about priming your carburetor. This is how simple it is to prime your carburetor, rather than just emptying it and then trying to suck it all through again. It doesn't work, okay? Um, if there's a lot of fuel in there, I'd be keep sucking it out that way. Yes, yeah, a bit tedious. You won't get any fuel out of that, so it's all good. Right, I'm gonna drain the rest of this fuel out, because it doesn't seem to be much in there anyway, if I'm honest with you. Um, and as I said, there seems to be some sort of restriction there. Let's take that off. It's just really, really badly low on fuel. Let's stick some fresh in it then, shall we? Hopefully you can see this, okay? It's not a very good stream, is it, really, of petrol? So, let's just see what it's like with different filter. Well, look, here's without the filter. I mean, that's a lot, lot better. I know the filter will restrict it a little bit, but let's just see if we change the filter. Put that one in there. I just want to see, that's all, whether we could uh, change the filter and increase the fuel flow through even. Ready? Remember what it was a minute ago? That's not a lot of difference, is it? So, okay. Just want to double check. I can keep that filter on here and let's put it back together. I'm, I'm a bit happy with that. So everything's back on. Remember, take pictures if you don't know what you're doing. Tighten them two up. All the pipes will go where they should go. This is your inlet manifold which is on the vacuum, so you suck that through, it goes through the filter into the bottom of the carb and primes the carb. Now what it means is that when you go to start the bike, fuel should be there. This bike should start as long as there's nothing else wrong with it. Um, I'm going to put a tiny bit of oil in just not to waste it if it's knackered, and then I'll change the oil if it starts. Let's have a look. So, <coughs> top the oil up just a tiny bit. I just... I don't want to waste a litre of oil. I really don't know if it's going to start. Um, everything's back on, everything's primed, battery's quite well charged. The engine is as it should be now. So, are you ready? Fingers crossed. Fuel gauge is working, which is brilliant. We've now got over half a tank of fresh fuel, clean plug, clean carburetor. Haven't touched the air filter yet, rollers, rat lock, not worth doing yet. Lucky, worth the punt, could have been 
as I said, a complete knackered engine. Let's give it an oil change now. Check the air filter out as well. But that is job done for this little bit. Um, let's get on with the panels and drain the oil out. Honestly, draining the oil out is one of those jobs you really, really should do. Um, I think you can see that's black. That's pretty black, to be honest with you. I dare say it holds a litre. <laughs> that's not going to cost nothing. As I said, just ordinary 1040 oil. Cheap doesn't matter. This is probably cheaper than cheap. I wouldn't surprise if someone fired their chips in this before they put it in the motor. <laughs> oh my god, there's not I don't think that's half a litre. Anyway, let that drain out. There's no filter in these, so just drain out the crappy oil, put some fresh in. That's got to be a much happier engine. Uh, check the airbox after that. 600 mils. It's pretty, um, it's pretty scabby oil. And you always look at the base there few tiny little bits of shavings in there from the engine nothing much but yeah 600 mil is not going to break the bank is it so just get a nice fresh one liter of oil i've got my manual in there i've got 20 liters of it there i'm not going to put some you know synthetic fully synthetic stuff in there because it's just not worth it but yeah i'll just put the mount up to the stick job done doing something right sometimes means taking off a lot more than you want to like the back box and the back rack so i could get this panel that snapped off you know don't take shortcuts unless they're clever ones but otherwise they're not going to work and you don't wonder why it never looked great now i'm not saying believe you me that gluing these panels properly i've noticed that someone tried to super glue them you can't super glue these plastic panels they're just cheap um, you've got to use a heat gun and put padding on the back. Um, but I'm going to glue that and then blow them over. I mean, it's another £60 on top of the bike. Am I going to get it back? No, I am not. So I will give someone the option, though, when I sell it, I'll say to someone, do you know, I can pay £60 out extra, but you'll pay it, I'll change them. But otherwise, I'm just going to glue these solid again, much, much better when you glue them um, rather than the other little bit and then glue all this back on again and put all the panels on and happy days, oil change, air filter was really clean uh, I may get another plug for it, it's probably been there just for 1900 miles it's not much at all, it was very good spark but it is running, it just looks in pieces still so uh, when you next see it, it will be back together again so it's all back together, my biggest tip whenever you take the bucket seat out, because you pull and push things around this little lock here, just double check that it's open and it works okay yeah that's my biggest tip because if you manage to put this down and that doesn't work you've got the seat stuck down and you have to pull panels apart and everything else right she runs very nicely now starts and stops as she should pull it in starts all lights work revs up and down i've adjusted the back brake a little bit happy with that I'm just gonna do a quick polish and then you can have a little look round now I'm not too impressed with the back here and um, this was what was damaged I've bonded it and blew it over I'm just not impressed with it but so here we have one completed 50cc direct bike well we called them the Boeotian and the Pulse Scout because all exactly the same but now they're direct bikes they must have bought the license out for them well, there you go Completely back to normal now. The back box, yeah, I'm leaving it off to be honest with you. It's just not worth putting on. It's a 19 plate for God's sake, you know? Anyway, now the bit I'm not particularly happy with, obviously the camera doesn't pick it up that well because it's blick, but uh, you know, you can see it, can't you? What do I do? 60 pounds for the, this, this is a two piece one. Is it worth it? I'm more likely the person on there will come off. You don't want to say that, do you? Have a little scrape, mess it up. I mean, it is all bonded. I've really uh, glued it underneath. Put pan underneath that and then glued it so it's well done. Oil's done. Yeah. It's a cute little bike. 19 plate, for God's sake. So, as I like to say, job done. Starts. Does what it's supposed to do. What more do you want to have a little peg, really? Um, not a lot. 
Right. Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe. A few more coming up as well. And then I'll get on some big bikes. I know some people are already complaining uh, about my moped selection or scooter selection. Don't get me started on that. You know, it seems to be out the biggest weirdos on YouTube. Some knob contacted me. Why would you call it a child scooter that pushes with one leg? He went on and on and on about it. I'm like, well, it says it on the logbook. I asked him where he came from. You know, not as in like what he replied, planet Earth, where are you from? Why? It's on the logbook. These are called mopeds. They're on the logbook. Then I get the other people, don't I? Moped. It's got no pedal since 1973. I'm not entertaining an argument with someone. I don't even know why I bother answering them. I just do, I suppose. I'm not, that's it. From now, I'm not going to answer them. They're moped, scooters. I don't care what you want to call them. Here in the UK, I just say what's on the logbook. And on a Peugeot Speed Fighter, it's got moped. And a Yamaha Aerox had scooter. And the next one's mope. Doesn't matter. 50 cc's. <laughs> There you go, rant of the day. Still on bloody mind. Anyway, job done. Please like, share and subscribe. Check out my other videos. Loads of mopeds, loads of scooters, loads of <laughs> motorbikes. Bye-bye.